ಪುಷ್ಪಿನಿಜಿ ಆದರಣೀಯ ಶ್ರೀಧರ್ಜಿ ಆದರಣೀಯ ಸಬ್ನೀಶ್ಜಿ ಆದರಣೀಯ ಹವನೂರ್ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಡಿಗ್ನರಿಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಡೆಲಿಗೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಥೀಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಕೀ ನಾಟ್ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಐ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಅವರ್ ಮಹಾನ್ ಮಾತೃಭೂಮಿ ವಂಡರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಭಾರತ್ ದೆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಬುಕ್ ವಂಡರ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಸಮ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಎಗೋ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎ ಎಲ್ ಭಾಷಮ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಫ್ರೆಂಚ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ ಹಿ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಅವರ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೋಟೆಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಹೆರಿಟೇಜ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ರೋಟ್ ಎ ಬುಕ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿ ವಂಡರ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಮೆನಿ ಎ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಅರೈಸಸ್ ವೆದರ್ ಭಾರತ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ ಆರ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ ನೌ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಸಂದೀಪ್ ನಾಯರ್ಜಿ ವೆರಿ ಲೂಸಿಡ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ಡ್ ವೈ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಕ್ಲೇವ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ದಿ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರಿಸರ್ಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ರಾಬಬಲಿ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದ ಇನ್ವಿಟೇಷನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಫೋರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪೇಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಕ್ಲೇವ್ ಪೇಜ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ರೆಕವರ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಸೊ ಅವರ್ ಥೀಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ವೆದರ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎನಿ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಸೊ ಐ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಮೈ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಆನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ದಿ ಥೀಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಅವರ್ ಮಹಾನ್ ಮಾತೃಭೂಮಿ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹಾಂ ಓಕೆ 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 ಸೊ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ದೇವ ಕಿಲ ಗೀತಕಾನಿ ಧನ್ಯಾಸ್ತುತೆ ಭಾರತ ಭೂಮಿ ಬಾಗೆ ಸ್ವರ್ಗಾಪವರ್ಗಾಸ್ಪದಭೂತ ಹೇತೆ ಭವಂತಿ ಭೂಯ ಸುರತತ್ವ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ವಿಚ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಬಾರನ್ ಇನ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೇಕ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಬೂನ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಬೋತ್ ಮುಂಡೇನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಆಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಿಕ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಭೂಮಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇವಿ ಭುವನ ಮನಮೋಹಿನಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಬೈ ರವೀಂದ್ರನಾಥ ಟಾಗೋರ್ ಬೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ದಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರವೀಂದ್ರನಾಥ ಟಾಗೋರ್ಸ್ ಪೊಯಮ್ ದೇ ಇಲ್ಲುಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಆ್ಯಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಭಾರತ ವೆದರ್ ಇಟ್ ಡೂ ವಿ ಫೀಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪೊಯೆಟಿಕ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಪೊಯೆಟ್ಸ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಪೊಯೆಟ್ ರವೀಂದ್ರನಾಥ್ ಟಾಗೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನೇಷನ್ naturally being born in this country we feel so much uh, feelings towards our motherland and naturally we might have said this such things may come to our mind but let us see what others also say about our country it is swami vivekananda again vivekananda is our own matrubhumi child india i loved before i came away now the very dust of india has become holy to me the very air now to me is holy it is now the holy land the place of pilgrimage it is tirtha vivekananda said this when after his triumphant tour of us and the continent he was about to board his sh- ship on onward voyage towards our country in the port one of his english disciples mockingly asked him he was a disciple at the same time he wanted to test vivekananda so he asked swami ji swami ji you have seen us you have seen the continent how do you feel about your country india for that swami replied this this is roma rola a very famous scholar and a spiritual leader he is a french man he
so this is what our vedic seers are rabindranath tagore or swami vivekananda are foreign scholars they have given tributes to our country we have to consider why these tributes have been given to us if you go through the pages of history you will understand how a nation is considered as great to consider a nation great a culture great a civilization great at least you require three benchmarks since a large number of students are here usually when i give a lecture in colleges since it is a college and colleges are connected with exams usually i will ask the students we will have three tests for our country and i request the students to decide afterwards whether our country has passed the exam or passed it in distinction you can also think that one the first and the foremost benchmark is ha huh, benchmarks of a nation our country bharat its civilization and culture is supposed to be nearly 5000 years old taking from maharpa and mahenjodaro latest thing is in rajasthan in rakhi gari excavations are going on it will push our civilization culture urbanization to 10000 years but anyway even if we take it as 5000 years during this 5000 years of history what was the life of the people how the life was there nation's life wealth prosperity culture happiness did it exist that is the first question the next question comes almost every society every country every nation has faced innovations when there is a foreign invasion how the country responded whether it was able to retain its culture retain its lifestyles that is the most important test because why i am telling this is we have seen so many innovations on so many countries and many countries have lost their culture has lost their moorings lost their civilization they have adopted the culture civilization of an invader whether such a thing happened to our country to our society which existed for 5000 years this is the second test the second benchmark and third one is contribution to the world if we have existed for 5000 years to the world thought and to the world processing what was our contribution that is the question now let us examine these things first nation's wealth prosperity happiness all of us know that india was known as the paradise land of culture prosperity wealth land of happiness and harmony world considered bharat as swarga paradise many of us know there is a description of paradise in bible many religious texts have description of this paradise and many people thought that paradise was bharat and also the somewhere in bharat the garden of eden where adam and eve took their birth was is located somewhere in bharat that was the conception because of that people wanted to visit our country it was an ardent desire to visit our bharat that is why people started finding sea routes land routes and so many things because bharat was always considered as a land of prosperity and land of bharat because of the time constraint i am bit hurrying explaining a little bit that's all not only these imaginations this is the graph given by angus medicine angus medicine was a great economist and cambridge university commissioned him to find out from the first century ad to 2000 ad which were the nation who were very prosperous and forefront in the world and the graph clearly shows till 18th century 1700s and plus till that time india was a prosperous country many of the economists who are here you will know you you know that uh, india's share of world business world trade up to 17th century was 30% today with all our software export and so many other exports our share is only 1% in world trade this book has been published in 2008 and some of its uh, parts is available on internet also i got it from an internet this is the graph you can see india occupying the center position 
and having up to 17th century, it was 30%. So, regarding wealth, prosperity, I need not explain more. You have seen. And also, all of you know that we had the golden age of our country. And uh, very recent thing is, just 600 years ago, it was Vijayanagara Empire, where people, uh, you, you have written, precious stones, gold and other things were sold on the streets of Vijayanagara. It is not a simple chronicle by any of us. It is Domingo Payas of Portuguese, Niccolo Conti of Italy, and Abdur Razak of Persia, who were ambassadors to Vijayanagara Empire, they have chronicled all these things. And they are available. They were written in their languages. Now it is available both in English as well as in our local Kannada language. It is available. There, they have recorded all this detail. So much prosperous the country. So for the first question, for the benchmark, you yourself give an answer. Next comes, how we were able to face the invasions. It is also a very important thing because ours is a 5,000 year old history. Similarly, we have the Mesopotamian Empire and Mesopotamian civilization, Mesopotamian culture, Egyptian civilization, Egyptian culture, and the Greek civilization and the Greek culture. Today, none of them have survived. Mesopotamian culture, which flourished between the Euphrates and Tigris River. Today, nobody knows where Mesopotamia is. Mesopotamia is our present-day Iraq. It had a, such a great culture, but once invasions took place, it lost everything. What we today see is the Arab culture, not the original Mesopotamian culture. Similarly, the Greek, similarly the Egyptian culture. If you go in the desert, you will see the Sphinx or the pyramids, remnants of that ancient culture. But we don't know whether the archaic Egyptian language is being studied today. No, it is not in the Cairo University. If you want to know what was the archaic Egyptian language, you have to go to Oxford, Cambridge or Harvard, where you have got Egyptologists who will study those things. None of the people in Egypt know these things. They enter, what were the gods they were worshipping? Mode of life, lifestyle, nothing. It is all in the history, the ages of history. Similarly, the Greek. Greek we know very much. The Greek civilization and culture which gave Plato, Aristotle, Archimedes, Apollonius, Socrates. For the past 2000 years, Greek has not produced any single eminent scholar or person of that stature. Today, Greek is a bankrupt country. Once invasions took place, entire Greek history, civilization, culture, it was destroyed. They were almost contemporary to our civilization and culture. So many invasions have taken place on us. Greek, Shaka, Huna, Muslim, Europeans. There were so much and the innovations were barbaric. When you go through the history pages, you will know what was the amount of barbarism that was perpetuated on us. Barbaric, bloody, annihilative innovations. Almost our civilization culture would have been destroyed. But it was immortal Bharat. It was Murtunjaya Bharat. Because of that, we were able to survive all these invasions. It was trimpent immortal Bharat. Even today, after all these invasions, the same cultural trends have been continued. The Vedic mantras and other things which were recited 5,000 years ago, that is being repeated even today. With the same candor, with the same intonation, nothing has changed. Our lifestyle has not changed. So many things. When you study recent excavation done in archaeology, we can very easily see the continuity of our civilization and culture for all these thousands of years, in spite of all these invasions. And contribution to the world culture. So it is the abode of spiritual thoughts. Even today, the whole wonder, world wonders at the spiritual thoughts that has been given to the whole world. All these things, right from the time of Vedic days, up to this day, it is the spiritual thoughts that is going to sustain the world. There is one great uh, professor of political economics, Jean Pere Lehmann. He is in Sweden. He is uh, uh, head of the department uh, in Institute of Advanced Studies, Advanced Management Studies. In 2006, he wrote a six-page article in New York Times. In that New York Times, he analyzed 
all the problems that the planet Earth is facing, all communal tensions and terrorist tensions, environmental problems, conflicts, economic uh, problems, all these things he discusses in the six-page article. And Jean Pere Lehman, he says, if planet Earth has to live and should not get destroyed, we require three things. He said, a sense of moral responsibility, spiritualism, and an ethical compass to each person. An ethical compass. A sense of moral responsibility should have, the society should have it. Then there should be spiritualism. And then an ethical compass to each person so that he will be guided. And next sentence, he writes that all these three is available in the Indian and Hindu traditions. And if the world adopts these traditions, these spiritual traditions of India, then only the planet Earth will survive. Otherwise, we will be annihilated. So even today, so much respect is being given. Today, so there are so many classes like management and Bhagavad Gita, psychology and Bhagavad Gita. One American psychiatrist I met, he had come to our country and I met him and he said in New York, he has got a, his clinic and the speciality of his clinic is, we know in the, uh, today in the modern medical field, you have got so much specialization. So his specialization in psychiatry is psychiatric problems of doctors. That was his specialization. And he said that uh, behind my seat, I have put this Bhagavad Gita photograph. So he says, Lord Krishna was the first psychiatrist of the world. That is what he has, he told me, an American uh, uh, psychiatrist. So, so much the world is looking at us. Today, all of us know for the past two years uh, how much yoga has become a buzzword throughout the world. So, yoga, our spiritual traditions, our thinking, all these things, that is our contribution to the world. And about of spiritual thoughts, we have got Shankara, Basava, Buddha, Mahavira, so many things, some of the greatest contributions, and world has started studying them afresh. They want to understand what is this, how to get that ethical compass for each person, and moral responsibility. And we gave a very exalted style of life that we called dharma. For dharma, there is no synonym in any other languages of the world. There is no parallel for that one, dharma. Dharma cannot be translated also. Like our prasad, like our arti, you cannot translate dharma. What is dharma? Drutikshamo, dhunasteyam. All the ten essential qualities a person should inculcate, should cultivate. That is, that is universal. If there is one universal thought, that is dharma gives that one. And that was given. And according to this universal thought, how a man's person's life should be, it has been taught. So people have started studying throughout the world. That is our great contribution to the world. In literature, art, all of us know. I need not explain much about it. In everything, Bharat, Bharat's contribution was one of the greatest contributions we have given, whether it is in music or in dance or in literature. So much has been given. Now comes the contribution to world of science. Because always people thought that Bharat was great in art, in literature, in spiritualism, in yoga, and all these traditions. However, science was essentially a Western product. Because of the British rule, we got science. Many people used to say, when I was a high school student, many people used to say, only the British, because of the British rule, we were able to get all these scientific ideas and other things. But many Indian scholars, as well as Western scholars, they have gone into history of science. History of science is a very important subject. Unfortunately, please pardon me, unfortunately none of our universities have got a department for history of science. Whereas in the world, so many major universities have got a department of uh, uh, history of science, which traces the evolution of scientific thought, evolution of mathematical thought, all these things. And whether such things have started in our country, whether there was any such contribution to the world, we will see. 
first and the foremost thing i want to speak on is on mathematics mathematics is essentially a human creation people say god created man when i say man it includes women also god created man and man created mathematics because the entire mathematics is the product of the human genius it is the human brain's genius that mathematics has been uh, created the mathematical knowledge of indians date back to vedic days using 1 to 9 and 0 that was invented right from the time of vedic times people who have analyzed the vedas rigveda from a scientific point of view one of the famous german indologist leopold von struder he has gone into this subject the scientific aspects of vedas and also of our other epics he has gone into it leopold von struder his book was published in somewhere in 1920 he finds out that the vedic indians invented the decimal scale using 10 as the base they considered number names to denote numbers eka dvi treni nava up to nava then the sixth system was dasha vimshati trimshat navati shata sahasra ayuta that is multiples of 100 these things the, we were able to see in the rigvedic days itself from that day the number system has flowed into our country as well as to the world next one the next development was the number symbols and you will see on the first this thing okay uh, the first line you will have got brahmi inscription you will see they you will see only nine digits there is no zero then the gwalior inscription gwalior means uh, that uh, inscription was found in gwalior so that is why it is called uh, archaeologically gwalior inscription and in that inscription zero has come then the devanagari inscription the devanagari inscription is used almost in all our indian languages whether it is kannada telugu marathi almost similar and the modern number system even the evolution of this number system was done in our country based on 10 base that is the most important thing because we should remember there were other systems in the world babylonian system was there it was sexagesimal system sexagesimal means you will have you have to remember 62 numerals how difficult would have been you just imagine and all of us know roman numum number system roman numerals i don't know anybody here had tried to do addition with roman numerals i request all the students that uh, after this conclave you can try to add roman numerals if adding roman numerals is not easy then what about multiplication division or using roman numerals for our higher mathematics in differentiation or in integration and differential equations what will be the fate you can imagine using roman numerals because we invented the number system based on 10 very easily mathematical progress took place in the world sanskrit translated aryabhata's uh, aryabhatiyam and brahmagupta's khandaka kadyaka into arabic language and he wrote a small book on hindu mathematical calculation hindu number system and it was translated into latin language in spain this manuscript is in the madrid archives madrid is the capital of spain there in government archives you have got this one codex vigilinex oldest in indian manuscript on Hin- italian mans there what is it latin manuscript on hindu numerals so this was translated and from 10th century only europe started using this number system and he has written from right to left 9 uh, 8 like that one and all of us know that zero is the greatest contribution that we have given to the world because without zero you cannot operate decimal place value system if you want to operate decimal place value system so you require zero and what is the philosophical thought behind zero all of us know on the number scale for number 1 2 3 they have got absolute value 3 is 3 times larger than number 1 that is the absolute value of uh, number 3 but we wanted a number which has no absolute value but when added it gives value to the other places in the system so that is place value system so that is how zero was invented and for the inspiration for the invention of zero is 
ಅವರ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿಧ ಪೂರ್ಣವಿಧಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಬುಧಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣವಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ಅವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೂವ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಝೀರೋ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ರಿಮೂವ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಡ್ ಟು ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ನೋ ಝೀರೋ ಇಂಟು ಝೀರೋ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಫಿಲೋಸಾಫಿಕಲ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಈಚ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲ್ ಥಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಫಿಲೋಸಾಫಿಕಲ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಡನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ಝೀರೋ ಇಟ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ if there are any english professors they will be knowing that zero is not a for the first time it was not used by shakespeare because there was no word like zero during shakespeare time in sanskrita shunya is called zero is called shunya nothing that was translated into arabic language as sifir and that sifir became in latin language zifre and from zifre the european uh, languages got zero that is how it has been traced this is what einstein said Einstein has written a book Ideas and Opinions that is available his thoughts in that he gives we owe a lot to indians who taught us how to count without which no worthwhile scientific discovery could have been made this is what albert einstein gives the greatest tribute to our country uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh, painting that uh, i wanted to show it to you right side the person with a red shirt he is pythagoras we all know that pythagoras is was a great mathematician and he was pythagoras and he is trying to do calculation using abacus and the other person left side he is an young person he is bothas he is another great greek mathematician an younger person and he is using hindu numerals and the lady standing behind them angel mathematica in greek lore you have got goddesses like we have and she is angel mathematica you can think she is our saraswati and uh, and the gown she is wearing it is painted with hindu numerals and also that is our number system indian number system and you can see her gaze and her hand is towards both us such posters were used during european renaissance in the 14th century in florence in milan in italy in paris in those places uh, near schools uh, such posters were put and people were told that if you use indian numerals it is easy to do calculations than using abacus so if you go through any history of mathematics textbook first page will be this so this is the greatest contribution of mathematics to the world we have given then square and cube roots aryabhata mentions this one even today the extraction of square and cube roots is according to what aryabhata prescribed that is what he has written even algebra was also started brahmagupta gives a detailed treatise of algebra and he calls it as kuttaka ganita or bija ganita bija ganita means we will find the unknowns that is why it is called bija ganita and the beginning of algebra is stressed to shulva sutras because the vedas contain what is known as shulva sutras they are required very much for the construction of altars and other things which involved mathematical uh, uh, problems so for that shulva sutras were developed similarly permutation because of time i will do bit fast permutation combination square roots what we today almost up to pre university or first year bsc level mathematics they were very much in use in our country and from here like so many texts were translated uh, to arabian language latin language for that you have got lot of uh, uh, those books are available even today the ancient texts as i said um, i am honorary secretary of mythic society which where we have got more than 40000 books and some of the books printed in 17th and 18th century also we have got and in those books you can see all these things all our ancient texts how it has been translated into uh, other language foreign languages and they how they were able to use these things and similarly geometry played a very important role in our country because all of you know that our sanskruti is yagna sanskruti so yagna kundas has to be constructed and we have got a belief that uh, the vedic mantras should be pronounced according to the rule only you cannot misspell them if you do it it is committing a sin similarly the construction of altars vedic altars fire altars they have to be constructed according to specifications precise if you commit any mistake that is also committing a sin for that reason geometry was developed 
during the vedic time geometry was developed as a ritualistic geometry then it became a separate subject separate discipline that is what it has been told next next hogbidi the next hogbidi ha ah, this is one famous one all of us know pythagoras theorem the origin of the pythagoras theorem is from the vedic times because all vedic altars are either square or rectangular and some will be circular but for a square and a rectangle if you put a diagonal you will get two right angle triangles it is easy to calculate the area of a right angle triangle half height into base so based on that for a required altar how many right angle triangles are required so that was the problem for that reason it pythagoras theorem was developed and it was called as bodhayana sutra and many texts now contains it as bodhayana pythagoras theorem and this is what i told you leopold von struder first he discovered this one that vedic shilva sutras contain what is known as this pythagoras theorem next you can go to next one. trigonometry also was our contribution next thing pi value aryabhata gives pi value to 3.1416 modern value is 3.1415 and it extends like anything and uh, aryabhata in 5th century clearly mentions that pi is not a rational number and all many of you may know that uh, european mathematicians were under the impression that uh, one day they will get a rational value of pi and it was only lagrange in 17th century proved that pi is an irrational number whereas aryabhata has proved it as an irrational number in 5th century ad itself his time is 470 499 ad and he had proved in his aryabhatiyam he has written and that is why he says in the sanskrita shloka the last stanza contains asanno vrutta parinaha asanna means in sanskrit it is approximate and he says you will never get a whole number it is approximate all these thoughts were decimated were created here and decimated to the world a metallurgy also i have chosen metallurgy because of a particular reason because metallurgy involves geology to know where the ore is there then you have got mining technology and plus you have got chemical technology and chemistry uh, to purify the ore and get the metal then you will have forging and casting technologies uh, to shape it into whatever material or tools or utensils you want for that reason it involves so much science and bharat led the world in metallurgy during even uh, as i told you angus medicines report up to 18th century most of the metal products cloth everything was exported from our country our copper our steel all these things were very much in demand in european countries india led the world in excellence the use of metals gold silver copper tin lead and iron was known since the time of vedas this jewelry they were excavated in harappa and mohenjodaro 5000 year old it has got a necklace a pendant and the chain is also a gold chain anklet used by ladies nowadays they use silver whereas during harappa mahanjadara period it, it was gold anklet what is and uh, this will clearly shows that our love for gold is more than 5000 year old <laughs> it is not but for us what is very important is not that one what is important all of us know that gold is a very malleable soft metal you cannot fashion out of gold pure gold you cannot fashion a jewelry for that either you have to add silver or you have to add copper in what proportion copper and or silver to be added because the melting point of gold the melting point of uh, copper are different fusion should take place in a proper way so that you will get a correct alloy actually our gold ornament is an alloy of either gold and copper or gold and silver how it is to be done what should be the temperature how long it should be fused all these things were determined 5000 years ago throughout the world it is the same percentage that is being used even today one dr bala subramanyam unfortunately he died of a very young age at the age of 45 he was professor and head of the department of metallurgy in karakpur iit he has written a beautiful two books on our indian metallurgy it contains all these details all of us know the famous iron pillar at mehroli with delhi 1500 years old we should understand it is a iron pillar it is not a steel pillar it is an iron pillar which is exposed to the vagaries of weather but still 
there is no rusting of it all of us know that uh, pure iron will get rusted within 48 hours it interacts with oxygen and ferrous oxide is formed but here in spite of 1500 years there is no corrosion there is no rusting of the metal and uh, professor anantaraman of delhi iit he has written a book on this one it is a scholarly book it is a technical book and it is called as the rustless wonder similarly the extraction of zinc was invented europe did not know till 13th century zinc as a metal that zinc was invent extraction of zinc by sublimation method was invented by in our country and unfortunately in 1748 that is in the 18th century william champion a british chemist he patented it in his name but most of the chemistry texts knows that this was invented in our country so zinc is also a contribution of us copper technology was known to us for the past 4000 years and this casting of buddha it is pure copper it is 2.29 meters in height weight 1 ton the important factor is neither the weight nor its height all of you are seeing that buddha is wearing a gown right from his throat to up to his feet that gown is also made up of copper only through copper you are seeing the body of buddha it is a special technique of casting which has been lost most of the metallurgy texts and archaeology texts contains and today this uh, uh, statue is a great attraction it is not with us it is in the birmingham museum in london like uh, british took our uh, uh, shivaji sword mayur simhasan kohinoor that agitation is going and kohinoor is to be returned similarly this was this is also in the british museum even in botany modern classification was done by parashara long back ha huh, this is very important parashara was a great uh, rishi rishi was always a science scholar also parashara was a great uh, science scholar he was a botanist and he has written what is known as vriksha ayurveda in that he gives a description of rasakosha he says that is a plant cell it contains an outer hard cover kala veshtana he is called it then he says sukshma patraka inside it you have got a thin membrane and inside the thin membrane you have got ranjaka yukta rasashtraya that is the sap he contains what is today we call as cytoplasm that is sap that is the uh, ranjaka yukta rasashtraya after giving all this description that is how a plant cell is there and he clearly describes in the further shlokas he clearly describes for shakti sanchaya that is for energy exchange the sukshma patraka is required because all of us know in physics that osmosis takes place because of thin membrane only and this osmosis takes place as an energy exchange in plant cells that has been proved for that you require a sukshma patraka thin membrane he gives all these things and parashara writes this plant cell is anvashva not visible to the naked eye even that he writes all of us know that robert hook in the 1665 ad he examined a piece of cork in a microscope and he said that plant cell is like a honeycombed compartment he could not explain more because for that you require an electron microscope or a powerful compound microscope whereas parashara has written in 100 bc all these details this is also very interesting in botany there is a shloka here and the, for all botanist the problem was that plants grow up to 80 feet 100 feet it's a great heights how water and nutrients absorbed at the root goes up to the tip of the tree see it has to work against gravity uh, in all our houses uh, for pumping water even to the first floor we require an electric pump but what is the mechanism in a tree or a plant so that water goes up that was thing so it was a baffling problem and two american botanists dickson and jolly in 1864 they proposed what is known as suction force theory so a capillary action takes place along the xylem path that is the watery path in the plants and during the in the xylem path uh, it is the uh, capillary action and because of that air water rises that is what he gave see this shloka it is in mahabharata shanti parva vaktre notpala nalena yathordvam jalamadadet tata pavana samyuktah padai pibati padapah 
ವಕ್ತ್ರೆ ನೋತ್ಪಲ ನಾಲೇನ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಪಿಟೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಡ್ರಿಂಕ್ ಜ್ಯೂಸ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ಹೌ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಸಕ್ ಏರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಕ್ಯೂಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜ್ಯೂಸ್ ರೈಸಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನಿಂಗ್ ವಕ್ತ್ರೆ ನೋತ್ಪಲ ನಾಲೇನ ಯಥೋರ್ಧ್ವಂ ಜಲಾಮಾದೇತ್ ವಾಟರ್ ರೈಸಸ್ ಹೌ ತಥಾ ಪವನ ಸಂಯುಕ್ತ ಪವನ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಏರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರಾವಿಟಿ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಡೌನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಇನ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಪರ್ವ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಪರಾಶರ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಟೂ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಲ್ಕಟ್ಟಾ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಎಡಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರಾಶರ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೀಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಸುರಪಾಲ ಇನ್ ಟೆನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಬಾಡ್ಲಿಯನ್ ಲೈಬ್ರರಿ ಆಫ್ ಆಕ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಡ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ಆಕ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಡ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಬಾಡ್ಲಿಯನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಲೈಬ್ರರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಾಡ್ಲಿಯನ್ ಲೈಬ್ರರಿ ಕಂಟೈನ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಎನಿ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ವೇದ ಆರ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಆರ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಆರ್ ಪುರಾಣ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಟ್ ಕಂಟೈನ್ಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಕ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಸ್ಟಟ್ಗರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಜನ್ವರಿ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೆನ್ ಟು ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಟೆ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ಯಭಟ and the left statue is in front of the inter uh, uh, university institute in pune astronomical institute in pune where jayanta naralikar headed one of our greatest astrophysicist there the statue is there next one see in 5th century ad aryabhata wrote aryabhatiyam in 476 when he was 23 year old and in the book he says bhagola sarvato vrutta sarvato vrutta means it is not circle spherical we all know that earth is spherical and that is what he mentions bhagola sarvato vrutta and he says that it, it is hanging in the sky and next anuloma gatir nausta what that poem says he is that earth is revolving from west to east for that he is giving an example anuloma gatir nausta paschat achalam what he says is that uh, if we travel in a boat in a river then we observe that all the trees and other things animals uh, uh, human beings on the banks uh, they appear to recede seeing that they appear to recede we feel the motion that is what he says when we travel in a train it is uh, if it is standing in a station if it is when we look at the right side some another train is moving we feel that our train is moving but we look at the left and platform is there and we are not moving we will understand so the motion is understood by relative to a frame that is what he is proposing and he says because earth is moving from west to east it appears that all the heavenly bodies sun moon stars they appear to rise in the east and set in the west even if a person uh, is a science teacher he will always say that sun rises in the east and sets in the west but aryabhata being a true scientist he will never say that sun rises in the east he says the apparent motion of the sun he says sun appears to rise in the east so clearly aryabhata explains and aryabhata calculates what is the time taken for earth to do one revolution diurnal revolution one diurnal revolution of earth aryabhata gives 23 hours 56 minutes 4.1 second modern calculation with all our gadgets 23 hours 56 minute 4.09 second difference 0.01 second ayurveda all of us know that even today ayurveda is being used as a medicine in our country and also elsewhere also even in us ayurveda has been considered as an alternative medicine to uh, allopathic medicine and uh, next you hogi one surgery photograph that i have put another interesting i will next one itself huh, ha this is very much rhinoplasty plastic surgery was invented in our country and afterwards it went outside plastic surgery means sarupika chikitsa all of us know that uh, nowadays uh, people who contest for miss india or miss world for that they will have plastic surgery to set right their nose or ears or any such thing that is sarupika chikitsa and uh, in ancient times uh, it was very much required because during ancient times uh, during the war they were using swords and spears and because of that many people's nose used to be cut off or ears to be cut off and how to set them right 
For that, uh, this was invented. And this is rhinoplasty. And the photograph of the person given is, his name is Kovasji. He was a soldier in the British Army. When the Maratha-British War took place in near Pune, this soldier, this soldier, this Kovaski, was a cannon driver. So he was operating cannon. And during the war, his nose was cut. That was repaired and re-established. Reconstruction was done by a doctor called Pandita Kumara. Pandita Kumara was a doctor and he created the nose. This was published in London magazines. See, this is the procedure that has been published in the London newspapers and also London Medical Journal, Lancet. This was published. And he says, you can see on the left side, there is no nose. And afterwards, what they have done is, they have cut on three sides the skin on the forehead that was kept as a flap. And approximately how the nose was, was made out of wax. On that, the skin was put and stitches were put. 21 days, it was kept and some ointment was applied to those things. After 21 days, the skin at the tip of the nose was cut. Till then, it was kept. The reason is, all medical students know that capillaries grow even if they are cut and they take 21 days to grow. To restore the blood circulation, that skin has to be retained, that piece of skin has to be retained and afterwards, this has been done. All these details were published in London newspapers and some two, three uh, British doctors came and they studied with Pandit Kumara, J.C. Carfew, known as the father of modern surgery. Almost all medical students who study surgery, they study J.C. Carfew's book. It is more than 2,000 pages history and in the first 20 pages, J.C. Carfew devotes surgery, how it was practiced by Sushruta in our country and he, how it was transported to other countries. All this belongs to the wonder that was Bharat. And in my starting of my speech, I said that whether it is ease, we is also, modern Bharat also is like that. Yes, you have got example. You have got Ramanujam, Jagdish Chandra Bose, Prafulla Chandra Re, Sarsivi Raman, then Homi Jai Baba and Vishweshwaraya. All these contributions, you know, how modern science also being practiced and contributed to the world thought and culture. All of us know what is our achievement in space, science and next one, electronic science, Param Padma, computers. This I am not going to explain because we have got another session where uh, Dr. Satish Reddy is going to explain all these things. And next one. In atomic energy also, we were, especially in the fusion technology. Fusion technology is easy, but whereas fusion technology is very difficult and we are in the forefront. And this is what Arnold Tynaby has written. Arnold Tynaby is one of the greatest historians of the world. Study of civilization, he has written a monumental book studying all civilizations of the world. He is a British historian. And he says that it is already becoming clear that a chapter which has a Western beginning, that is for the past 300 years, it is the Western beginning, the modern thought. Western beginning will have to have an Indian ending if it is not to end in self-destruction of the human race. At this supremely dangerous moment in human history, the only way of salvation is the ancient Hindu way. Here we have the attitude and spirit that can make it possible for the human race to grow together into a single family, Arnold Joseph Tynbee. What I, Jean Pierre Lehman, in 2006 he said, this Arnold Tynbee wrote in 1960s in his study of civilization. So our motto is Krunvanto Vishwavaryam. Let us make the whole world noble. This is what we have contributed to the world thought and culture. Now you can decide what were our benchmarks, whether we have passed <laughs> mere pass or we have passed in distinction. This much I wanted to present in front of you because in that conclave, we want to present what is the resurgence of Bharat, how was our glory and we have to recover our glory. And one more point I want to add that this conclave has been housed in this auditorium, VTU Ashwin Auditorium. And this institute is named, our university is named Saram Bharataratna Vishweshwaraya. In its name, it has been built. And this month is the birth month of 
ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರಯ್ಯ ಆನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಂಬರ್ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರಯ್ಯ ಟುಕ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರಯ್ಯ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಬುಕ್ ಹಿ ಹಸ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ಹಿಸ್ ಮೆಮೊರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಒಪೀನಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅವರ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೋ ಇಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ಲಿ ರಿಟನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆಲ್ ಅವರ್ ancient traditional values which are very much required things which are not required should be discarded at the same time we should have all the modern to be assimilated with us so in a university it has been named after vishweshwarya we are conducting this how the country should be there all many young persons have come here so thank you very much for listening to me and also i thank prabuddha bharat and others for giving me an opportunity thank you very much